1031 in New York. The FBI is now investigating this beheading in Oklahoma, looking for any possible links to terrorism there. The suspect allegedly attacked his co-workers, beheading one of his victims the day after he was fired. Co-workers say he recently started trying to convert some of those co-workers to Islam. But for now, the feds are treating it as workplace violence. Deneen Borelli is the outreach director for Freedom Works and a Fox News contributor. Jessica Tarloff is a Democratic pollster and senior political strategist at Schoen Consulting. And ladies, good day to both of Hello, you. Bill. Deneen, how Thank do you view this? Well, first of all, my thoughts and prayers go out to the families of no the question. deceased and the, the injured lady. Uh, but, Bill, this isn't rocket science. Clearly, this is a lone terror attack from an individual. And this is on the heels of an announcement from ISIS on September 21st calling for uh, what they say kill disbelieving Americans and also on the heels of publicizing beheadings in Iraq. I mean, clearly, this individual has committed terrorist acts. How many clues does our country, does our administration need? Can you dispute that, Jessica? I mean, I haven't done a full investigation, and that investigation hasn't been done yet. I think to say that clearly this is a terrorist attack, it might be jumping the gun there. The FBI has gotten involved, which I think is the right thing. But you are correct that we have seen this, like in Australia, the plot last week. Um, it suggests that it's possible. But until we have concrete evidence, I don't uh, think yeah, that we should be and the saying one that. Thing, the one thing, you think about Nadal Hassan at Fort Hood, and you think, you know, workplace right. violence, right. which is still categorized that way. Right. Um, I'll let you address this, but just let me make this point, is that we did not know a whole lot about Nadal Hassan, but the yeah. deeper we learned about him, right. it was the, the connection was obvious then. Sure. And we are still learning about this man. We are, Oklahoma. but you know what? The first place to start was his Facebook page. It was littered with all kinds of terrorist comments and photos and praising the actions of what ISIS is doing. And he is mimicking what he was reading and searing and, he and hearing in regards to these acts. And what he did is, is absolutely outrageous. How many beheadings do we have in America and following on the heels, as I said before, of what ISIS did with the oh, announcement yeah. and, and to this, attack America? This is the danger. And the, the the point is well taken. He was fired the day before, right. so he right. had a grudge to settle there, clearly, uh, from his perspective. But Deneen's point is well taken. Absolutely. When you've got people all over social media calling on Westerners to act. Yeah, and I mean, he said that he was against America, he said he was against Israel. I mean, that's not refutable, but that also doesn't make someone a terrorist at this point. I, it's just seems fast to get to that. Would, um, would you admit, though, that this administration is loathe to cast Islam in a negative light? Yes. <laughs> Listen, it's coming from the top, Bill. Uh, domestic, what, man-made contingency plan overseas, workplace violence. This isn't workplace violence, beheading someone. These are acts of terrorism. And I say there is more to come if our law enforcement, our federal agencies don't get involved and do more to protect Americans. This is coming from the top. But it could also be workplace violence in a more hyper-violent culture. I mean, things have changed, right? I mean... But, but do you think the administration's been... It's, it's reticent. It's I, cautious to, but to I think cast that they Islam should in a bad light. I mean, wh why shouldn't they be? Majority of Muslims are not terrorists. That's, I mean, the religion itself no preaches. I understand no one's saying that, but when we immediately jump to that, you are, by implication, suggesting that that's a possibility in all of these. Okay. I'm thinking let's of the Boston see. bombers, Bill, and Russia even gave warnings to America about their intentions. There are flags are out there. The red flags right. are out let's there. Let's see what the FBI comes up with on this. I want you also to react to what happened last night on 60 Minutes there in the segment with Steve Croft. Just listen to this answer about America. We are the indispensable nation. We have capacity no one else has. Our military is the best in the history of the world. And when trouble comes up anywhere in the world, they don't call Beijing, they don't call Moscow, they call us. Mm. Sounds like we're exceptional. Well, we it's nice to hear the president say that, and I completely agree. I think American values are top of the heap. His point, I mean, using Moscow and Beijing is intentional and it's important. I mean, we are at this moment, you know, taking down our military spending while they're amping theirs up. They and are, he has dropped those two countries repeatedly in the last because month. Because they vote together yeah, at the U.N. So, I mean, so they're for, a pair. The, for those who bang on him for not for casting the Greeks and the British is exceptional. Um, have they now been served six years later? 
Well, it's ironic that Obama is making those comments that uh, we're an exceptional country and also that we should be policing the world. I disagree that we should be policing the world. And for him to come out and basically throw our intelligence under the bus, saying that, you know, basically uh, they messed up, it wasn't me. They, he's been briefed for years of what has been going on with ISIS, and, and he had his head in the sand. Mm. And here we are. He did not say the word exceptional. But if you read between the lines, it's clear it's that our role in the world is unique and it Absolutely. needs to be embraced. Thank Absolutely. you, Jessica. Thank you, Denise. Thank you. All right. 22 minutes.